Hey everyone, in this lecture we will be setting up our app to allow us to automate our unit tests. We'll be installing Karma, Jasmine and PhantomJS and take a look at some of Karma's configuration options which give us control of how and what to test. So let's start off by installing Karma command line and PhantomJS by typing npm install karma-cli space phantom JS. Now we need to install these globally by using the minus g parameter so that, the, that they'll be available to us from the command line. Once those are done downloading, let's just check that they've been installed correctly. So karma is available. And so is PhantomJS. Great. The next thing we need to do is install Karma and Jasmine in our project. As you can see, I've already navigated to my project directory. So we just need to run npm install Karma space Jasmine. And don't forget the save dev parameters. Okay, let's just check that Karma and Jasmine have been added to our project. Head on over to brackets, check the package.json file, and here we find Jasmine and Karma have been installed correctly. We'll also need to install Angular Mox since we'll be using it later. So head back on over to terminal, but this time we're going to be using Bower to install it. So go into your app folder and type in Power install angular dash mox and save it to the power.json file. Head back on over to brackets and then just make sure that angular mox has been added. Great. So that's it for installations for now. The next thing we need to do is configure Karma. Luckily, Karma also has an init function which creates a default configuration file for us. So let's create a new folder for all our test code and set up Karma in there. So in our JS folder, add a new folder called test, add another folder called units, which we'll be using later, head back on over to terminal, cd into the test folder, and run karma init. This is going to ask us a series of questions just like npm and Bower did, but this time we need to pay a bit closer attention to what it's asking us. So starting off, the, the testing framework that we're going to be using is Jasmine, correct? We won't be using require.js. Now for testing, we don't want to be using Chrome, we want, but we want to be using phantom.js. So let's see if it's available. And there we go. Choose PhantomJS and enter an empty string to move along. Now this question is asking us where all our files are located. So the ones that our app uses and our testing files. I like to leave this one blank and set it up manually since we use files from different locations. It's easier to set up by just writing it in the file. We won't be excluding any files for now. We'll also need to answer yes to this question because we do want Karma to watch for any file changes so that as soon as we update our app, Karma starts running tests again and informs us whether everything is still working correctly or anything has broken. So just answer yes to this. Great, so our Karma config file was generated. Let's check it out. So here's our generated Karma configuration file with the options that we selected. Let's go through it for a sec. So we didn't specify a base path, so all our options are going to consider the, the path of the Karma configuration file to be its base path. Where you can see that it selected Jasmine as our framework. The files will need to populate in a moment. We're not excluding anything. 
At the moment, we don't have preprocessors, but we'll be adding one later on. The reporters are used to display the Karma testing results. For now, we can use Progress, but we'll also be adding one later on. Web server ports is the port that we'll be using to run the Karma server, and the one we'll also be using to debug any Karma tests later on. It sets auto watch to true, just like we want. We want Karma to be watching for any file changes while the server is running. As browsers, we've got PhantomJS set up. Great. You could also add other browsers here, but for now we'll be using PhantomJS since it's the fastest of the bunch. And the final one we need is the single run force, which means that Karma will keep running in the background and testing as we code along. So before we actually run Karma, Let's add those files that we left out before. So first of all, we're going to need to add Angular itself, which is two levels up and in the Bower Components folder. So if we Bower Components, Angular, Angular.js. We're also going to add Angular Mox, which is also in Bower Components. So two levels up, Bower underscore comp components, Angular dash Mox slash Angular dash Mox dot JS. Next, we've got our actual app. So just one level up this time and app.js and finally any files in the unit test folder so any JavaScript files to be more specific great let's save our changes head back on over to terminal and give it a try by writing karma start and pointing it to the karma config file so now we've got the Karma server running, but obviously we're getting an error because we don't have any tests yet. But just to show that Karma is actually watching for changes, let's fix this warning up here that's saying that it's not finding any files to check by heading back to brackets and adding a new file to the unit test folder. Let's call it testing angular unit spec.js and if we head back to terminal you can see that karma actually noticed that a file changed and ran, ran the tests again great so in this lecture we finished setting up our app to allow us to serve up unit tests and automate the whole process in the next lecture we'll be taking a look at creating our first unit test and from then on we'll keep on expanding the app with new features and keep adding new tests as the app grows.